Now, following the Supreme Court judgment that the government's Rwanda plan is unlawful, Rishi Sunak has hinted to reporters that he could call an emergency stop the boats election. With the Conservatives languishing in the polls, could a campaign based around this one single issue move the dial for Sunak and hand him an unlikely victory in a few months' time? I'll get the views of my pundits shortly. But first, let's speak to Reform UK's defence spokesman, Frederick Chedham. Hi, Fred. Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, I've been asking my listeners and viewers today, will Britain ever stop the boats? Do you think we will? Not on, not on the present trajectory that this government is following. They have no hope. Uh, they are simply trying to wriggle around human rights legislation, which is every other form of legislation we've got. And they're coming up against the Supreme Court, the ECHR, uh, and every bit of metropolitan that goes against it. And so they are not going to do it unless they are prepared to undertake some radical reform. And frankly, we see little evidence that they're prepared to undertake that bravery. Uh, what do you think about this idea by the Prime Minister that he could call an election, possibly a snap election, based around stopping the boats? Could that move the dial for him? Well, he's full of gimmicks, this man, isn't he? That's all he does. Rwanda is a gimmick. We were going to swap... 200 people from somewhere for 200 Rwandans. That was never going to be a deterrent. And this idea is a gimmick as well. And I think he's speaking more to his own party, where maybe there may be some voices being raised as to the need for a vote of no confidence or whatever. And I think he's basically trying to damp down the thread of that. I mean, the idea that a single issue, general election on this, is going to make much difference uh, is, is, is the work. But even if it gave him a mandate, what's he going to do? He still won't do what he needs to do which is the Human Rights Act, and of course the problem of the ECHR. And no matter how much he tries, he's going to against that brick wall. And we are going to have to take some fundamental reform of those areas of our legislative framework. And a general election will change nothing. Well, I guess uh, you shouldn't hold your breath, should you, Frederick, because it looks like the Prime Minister is unwilling to leave the ECHR. George Osborne this week said that with David Cameron in the Cabinet now as Foreign Secretary... The, that won't happen. That's for the birds, the idea of exiting the ECHR. And the lawyer, who is going to be our next prime minister, most likely, Keir Starmer, takes the same view. So that means the boats will not stop. Well, I think on the present, right, but as we've seen already from the priest you did earlier, I mean, this government does wake up very late to the problems it faces. Eventually, when it's staring defeat in the face, it makes some changes. Now, you're right, the ECHR asked decision may take some time to leave it, but there's absolutely no reason why we can't set aside to supply some of the positions of this. And the idea that the ECHR makes us a pariah state, I just don't buy. I mean, Australia, Canada, United States, they seem to get along quite happily with their human rights without the need for some trans superior jurisprudence. Uh, we can just apply the ECHR decisions. We've done it before, That's seven times out of 80 decisions. Uh, we've done that. We did it with voters, uh, prison voting system. More importantly, more importantly, go to other countries. Strasbourg is stuff full of case law where inconvenient decisions have been set aside by members that want to follow it. And that is a decision which we can take here and now. And I suspect a little bit closer and the polls don't move and that dial doesn't shift that we're talking about. Someone in government is to wake up what the British people are asking for, mm. and that is to stop those votes. Interesting stuff. Well, let's bring my pundits in, if I can, Frederick. Do stay there. Ben Afwedu, Lady Victoria, Harvey and Lisa McKenzie. Uh, ben, do you think Britain will ever stop the boats? Um... Hmm, I don't know. I don't know if they will, but I do think that that, that Rishi will call a general election. In it, mm. I, I think that this is not the time for infighting in the Conservative. Party. So you predict a sort of snap, stop, stop the boats election. Yes, a single issue election. Yes. I, th I think so. I think he'll do it because I think that mm. he's just saying, "Listen, guys, we can't afford to fall apart at this time right now." Yeah, I wonder, Lady Victoria Harvey, whether this presents Rishi Sunak with an opportunity. He's down in the polls. It looks like almost yeah. certain defeat. Could this be well, the one issue that saves him? Well, I just, what I don't understand is like, why can they not just stop the boats from coming so we don't have to actually send people back? Mm. 
to other countries. Well, indeed. And of course, that's what happened in Australia, where they, in the end, used their navy to turn boats away. But it seems like a legal minefield. Do you think, what do you think about this, Lisa McKenzie? Will the government ever stop the boats? No, no, they're never going to be able to stop the boats. I mean, people are going to travel forever. We've always, human beings travel, that's what we do. So they will never stop them. But sort of the the Rwanda plan, they need to stop that because it's wasting time, it's wasting resources and it's wasting people's goodwill, actually. Um, The Rwanda plan was never going to work. It was expensive. It was not practical. It was, you know, it was no good. But Lisa, I mean, my heart goes out to people struggling to get to this country, but... Mm. You know, in the end, the public find this intolerable. It's a national security, economic and humanitarian disaster. Why have we got to tolerate these illegal crossings? But what we can do, I'm not saying that we can't do anything. There are lots of other things that we should be doing. We should be looking for the safe routes. We should be... um, Well, that's probably going to involve more crossings, isn't it? Well, it might might Um, do. Well, it's winter right now. So the good thing is it's winter and it's going to be a lot harder for them to cross at the Mm. moment. Look, in America at the moment... There's been about 25,000 people that went to Chicago and they've realised that actually America is not selling the dream anymore. And so Mm. they're actually going back home. My so goodness. maybe well, that's, that's, that will happen here. Yeah, 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 I'm sure that's going to happen here. If we don't Finally. treat them so well, Vic- maybe Victoria, they'll go back. Uh, Victoria, um, France, uh, France's uh, president, Emmanuel Macron, said mm. we cannot accept the misery of the world. Is it time that we have that conversation now? I, because in the yes. end, there's an unlimited number of people it that is. you could welcome. It, it, it is that time, because otherwise, like, what is going to happen? We cannot even look after the, our, our, our veterans, our own mm. veterans that are, like, you know, 100-year-old people. Remember that person recently that was, like, homeless at 100 mm. years old? I mean, I, I agree that we should be doing... that we should have this conversation. Is I think the, con- the, point. Yeah. the conversation even, needs to be had. Even the last year and a half, I've noticed a lot more homeless people here. I left California because of, like, people everywhere. The homeless ten, ten so cities. Bad. Ten mm. cities. We do not want England to become like that. Yes, do, do you, stand there up you go. Briefly, now. Frederick, uh, California, a warning to Britain. <laughs> well, possibly. I mean, I think the problem is we spent about two, maybe three decades letting ourselves into a corner. The government no longer control this problem. The courts and the metropolitan elite control them. And unless we prepare to front up to the idea that Blair's, Blair's notions of open borders, rights act, and followed on by... Um, open society, and then May's modern slavery have put us into a position where the government can no longer take the action that the people want them to do. And unless Frederick. they are prepared, that's going to change. Frederick, great, great first appearance on the show. First of many, I hope. My thanks to Frederick Chedham there, the Reform UK defence spokesman. Well, in an exclusive Mark Dolan tonight People's Poll, we've been asking, will Britain ever stop the boats? And you're not sounding optimistic. 88.8% say no, we won't, whilst 11.2% say yes, we will.